Hey everyone. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about JavaScript objects. So objects in JavaScript can also go by other names, such as associative arrays or hash tables. So objects are great when you want to have a key and value pair. Uh, objects are similar to arrays, except that instead of indexing uh, elements by numbers, you can index them, index them by the key, um, the key names. So for example, an array, if you had something like one, two, three, if you want to access the number Let's, let's change, let's say 100, 200, negative 2. If you wanted to access the, this element, you would have to index it by doing R of 2, and you get this element. Objects, on the other hand, you can have names for these uh, values. So you can do something like uh, name Daniel, comma, uh, action, coding, comma, age, 100. So now instead of, like in an array, so let me write this out also in an array. In an array, you would do something probably like this. You would do Daniel, comma, coding, comma, 100. So the problem with this is that these elements can change. So if you set that the third element in the array will always be the age, if, for example, sometime in the future, you add something here, such as a, uh, height, um, so 5, 10, comma, uh, your program might get a little uh, messed up because it thought the third element was always the age. So it would be great if somehow you can access these elements by a name. And that's what objects allow us to do. So you can actually space it out a little to make it look nicer. So you have something like this now. Name, Daniel, action coding, age 100. So you separate them by commas, and then here's the key, and here's the value. So accessing the elements in an object is similar to arrays. So you can do object name. So you specify an object by doing the curly brackets, and to access it, you do it um, just as you would for arrays. So now you run your code. Oh, whoops, I put a comma. Oh, this should be a colon, sorry. So now if you do object name, you get Daniel. Object age, you get 100. Uh, so objects are great for when you want to store uh, values by key names. So one example, as, um, and one of the co uh, coder byte challenges makes use of this, is when you're trying to um, count how many letters are in, is in a sentence. So it would look something like A, you have five, um, five A's in a sentence, B, you have 12, and uh, etc. Um, so we can actually write the solution for something like this. So let's just say we have a sentence. So we'll give it string, uh, hello, hello world, I am a sentence. So let's just say we wanted to count uh, the how many times each character appears in this string. So there count, actually we'll store it all in an object. So object, we have a blank object. Now we'll loop through the string. So where i equals zero, i is less than the length of the string, i plus plus. So normally if you wanted to do this without using objects, you would maybe have an array and then sort it in uh, alphabetical order so that the first element in the array represented an A, the, first, the second element in an array represented a B. So you could have something like this equals an array. And maybe you had one, two, zero, zero, five, and etc. So this would mean you have one A, two Bs, zero Cs, zero Ds, five Es. Uh, but a better way to do this would be using objects. So uh, we'll create a new variable and we'll call it current care equals string care at i. So what we're doing is we're getting the current character uh, in the string starting from the beginning. So the first character is H, second character is E, and so on. So if so, we want to check if the current character exists in an object. So if, a, if, a, if you're trying to access a key that doesn't exist in an object, you'll get undefined. So if object of current care equals undefined, that means it doesn't exist in the object, we'll add it in 
and we'll set the count to one, which means so far it occurred one time. And then otherwise, so if if the character does exist in the object, we'll add we'll um, add one to its current count, so plus equal one. So with this simple loop and these simple conditionals, we've just created an object that can store the count of each character. So now if we return object, so we see that we have H occurred one time, E occurred four times, uh, L three times, O twice. This is actually a space, so there are five spaces. One, two, three, four, five. And, and you have the rest of the characters here. So let's actually create a compact string, so A, 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 B, B, C, H. So here you can see it more clearly. It counted A, 3, B, 2, etc. So now it's really cool because you can access this the following way. If you want to see how many A's occurred in this sentence, you just do object A, and you get 3. Uh, so yeah, this is a really simple example of how you can use objects. This is actually one of the challenges on CoderBite. Um, Okay, yeah, so I have, the next tutorial will outline some common array and object methods that you can use on CoderBite.